Next up, however, is a report on a most unusual sporting spectacle in a most unusual place. The place is the Isle of Man, a tiny independent nation situated in the Irish Sea between Ireland and the UK. Each summer, tens of thousands of spectators and riders flood the Isle of Man to watch and compete in races that take place amid the cozy confines of the country's normal roads and streets. The nonstop action is loud, it's close, and as our John Frankel reports, it's often deadly. In fact, it seems not to bother the locals one little bit. It is the fastest, toughest, and deadliest motorcycle race on Earth, by far. A course that's 38 miles long, where riders do up to six laps at a time. And they reach speeds of nearly 200 miles an hour. And get this, it's not on a professional track, but on public roads, up and over mountains, and through tiny towns and villages. Mark Miller is a professional rider from California. He's been here six times. I've never been to a race before where you come off the racetrack and your mechanics give you bear hugs. They're thanking you for coming back safe because then they don't have to live with it for 20 years if you should kill yourself on their bike. Do you get scared? Oh, yeah. I get nervous every time I go out. You could crash into somebody's house. You could crash into spectators. There's a lot of risk, and I like that for some strange reason. I like that it's so pure. Pure is one way to put it. Pure insanity, another. What's that, 120 mile an hour wheelie? In the last decade, more than three riders a year have died. And since the race began more than 100 years ago, 237 riders have lost their lives to this course. It happens in the last place you'd expect, on an idyllic island in the middle of the Irish Sea, with rolling hills and medieval castles, the Isle of Man where more than 30,000 fans and their bikes roll onto the island each June to see the spectacle. About 100 riders compete in these tourist trophy, or TT races as they're known, racing everything from juiced up superbikes to two-man sidecars. If you go anywhere in the world, and I live here on the Isle of Man, and they go, where do you live? I go, Isle of Man, wow, TT, and that's really what says it. It's just all about the TT. And it Steve Parrish was a top rider in England. He's done this race eight times and now covers it on television. He says the island's love of bikes even convinced him to move here. That and the fact that on most of the island, there's no speed limit. The appeal for fans, he says, is that unlike anywhere else, here you're practically part of the action. I can promise you, I could take you down the bottom of that hill there, sit you in a garden, give you a cup of tea for practice or a race, and you'd throw that tea over yourself when the bike went past. Because they're going to pass you a metre away from you, doing 180 miles an hour. You can get so close to it, you feel the wind and the smell. You can feel the heat off the bike going past you. Modern day racing now, you're 100 metres away from the bike rider. They're like a little dot going past. Here, you're part of it. Describe for me what it's like to be going at those speeds in such tight confines. Is, is there anything like it? It's like hitting hyperspace on the Millennium Falcon, you know, when they hit, you know, hit it, Chewie, and everything just... To get a sense of just how fast these riders go, we mounted a camera on Miller's bike during one of the races. This is what it looks like from his perspective. The sensation of speed is so heightened because everything's so close to you. In short circuit stuff, you're pulled way back from the fans and the walls, and there's gravel traps. And here, you're scraping the hedges with your elbows. You can scrape your helmet against a wall. You've got to be in the moment at, at every single tenth of a second. And if you fuck it up, you're in somebody's front yard or a pub or off a cliff. Exactly what happened to this rider two years ago when he says a gust of wind hit him at the wrong moment. Somehow, he's actually back riding this year. Yes, Mother Nature can be cruel. Just ask Nick Crow, one of the best sidecar drivers in the world, who ran into this hairy situation three years ago. A rabbit. A big rabbit sat in the middle of the road, and I just hit it face on, and, and that, that was history. It was, it was you know, 155 mile an hour straight into the trees, and I just 
Um, here I am now, three years down the line, just still recuperating from injuries. It cost him his arm and his racing career. Are you lucky to be alive today? Very, 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 very lucky. You don't know what's going to be in the middle of the track when you crest the corner because it's always blind. Every corner is blind, and sometimes there'll be doctors lying down, kneeling down with a guy. You know, there could be a bike sitting there, there could be oil, there could be a fire. I've been hit by a bird. It puts a big welt on your arm. I mean, you're going 150 mile an hour. Sometimes, though, the drivers themselves are their own worst enemies. Like the time Miller thought he had a chance to win. And just decided to go for it. And I just whacked the throttle, and it just tank slapped and ripped right out of my arms. And the trees were going by, and I was sliding on my back. Here's a pole coming. I'm going to hit the pole, and thinking, it, here it goes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, and it, I missed it. I missed it. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, wow. It fucked my head up for a, a good two months. But you got back on. Yeah. Why? Because some time passes and you think, you know what, just don't do that again, and it's, it's fun, and it's the biggest challenge in the world for, on a motorcycle on two wheels on the pavement, at least. If you're starting to wonder who actually runs an event like this, where people fly off cliffs, slam into rabbits, and run into pubs, literally, and where spectators are even killed, meet Alan Bell. We can't live life uh, wrapped up in cotton wool, and you don't live life wrapped up in cotton wool in the Alabama. He's the guy who runs the show, as the island's head of state, or chief minister, as he's called. Yes, believe it or not, this event is run by the government. In this day and age, there are so many places that say, uh-uh, we don't want the liability, we don't want the responsibility, and frankly, we don't want people dying. How is it you're able to embrace this race as a government in a country? It's very much our culture here. Motorcycling is in our blood. The event itself is over 100 years old. Uh, we've all grown up with, with the event. Eyes of the motorcycle world focus on the Isle of Man when the TT races are on. Yes, this madcap race has been happening here for more than a century. Even back in 1907, when the race began, the Isle of Man was the perfect place to host it. Probably because it was the only place that would. It had its own government, own laws, even its own currency and a fierce sense of independence. A day in the middle of the two-week event when the island opens up the same course where the race takes place to any fan who wants to ride it. No speed limits, no rules. This year, five people died. There has been a lot of criticism, particularly after the race in 2005. Nine people died in that one year, the most ever. What do you say to critics? They can't be wrong when nine people die. It's desperately sad when something like that happens, but the overwhelming support of the competitors, of their families, is no, we mustn't, we have to keep it going. It's what those competitors themselves would have wanted to see. Do you see another place in the world where this could be replicated? I don't think so. Not, not now. The health and safety brigade that, that dominates society in pretty well every country would not allow an event like this to start. But because it's so much part of, of our history and our culture now, you know, we will never let, let it die. We, we, we'll fight as hard as we can to keep it. Are there too many deaths? Yeah, because some of them are my friends. So yes, there is. But a lot of the people that come here do it because it's so dangerous. It's the same as jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. It's the same as rock climbing. You get a buzz from it. It tells you you're alive. Fear tells you that you're alive. Which is why you'll find all sorts trying to feel alive out here in the middle of the Irish Sea. From professional riders, to weekend warriors. It all may seem completely and utterly nuts to you, but for everyone here, it stands for something more than just riding bikes around an island at breakneck speeds. More than just a matter of life and death on the course. Much more. So the Isle of Man it lives, eats and breathes motorcycles. No one's made to come here. There's no arms twisted up your back. You come here because you want to, and I, don't, I think that's that's fair in life. I really would be very, very annoyed if someone said you couldn't race around the TT circuit. Because for me, if they did that, they'd have to ban everything else. If I lived on this island, I'd be out here all the time ripping up this mountain. Certainly. This is the one place left that, you know, little hooligans can kind of do it and be celebrated, do it, which is funny is they actually encourage you to do it.
John, just how dependent on the, on the TT race is the Isle of Man's economy? It is the economy now. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it used to be tourism, but now it is these, this, these two weeks of races and the thousands of people that come over during the two weeks. The rest of the time, it's a pretty sleepy town, although it is a banking economy and a little bit of a tax haven, people call it. But uh, for the most part, these races are what's, what keep the island going. You said Alan Bell is, is what they call a chief minister, the guy in charge, basically. They get much pressure to tone it down or rein it in? During the course of the races, these two weeks, a lot of the papers in the UK will start coming up with some editorials to say, hey, this is too many deaths. Let's knock this off. And they'll say, look, this is who we are. This is what this island is about. There's a long history here, and nobody's putting a gun to these guys. We're talking heads. about over 230 deaths. Yeah, 237 people over the course of time. But you're talking about the race being, has been going on since 1907. So, yes, a lot of people. Some spectators. Some, yes. There, on occasion, there has been a spectator. But most of the people are those who are riding in the races and on this mad Sunday day when anybody, any fool who wants to get on a motorcycle and go as fast or as slow as they want, that's when some of the deaths Can occur. I safely assume the Isle of Man doesn't have, like, New York City potholes on these streets? Oh, no. They're, they're, they pave the course each year in, in preparation, but you're talking about what they call the street furniture. You know, you go over a manhole cover at 190 miles an hour. That ain't fun. Wow. Wow. All right, Jeff. Thanks. Sure thing.